could actually see a correlation after that test because I think there were like 200 or 300 people that, that attending the jumps that people were jumping high. They had strong, um, strong leg muscles. They were also in the top four in each category. So this was really interesting. Okay, so today we're joined by Arto. So uh, Arto is from Sweden, and he's got a renowned career of his own in ITF Taekwondo. And Arto is now also a coach on the Swedish national team. Arto is also studying, is it sports science, Arto? Yeah, yes. Good. So uh, how, how's that going? Yeah, it's going forward. Uh, I, I had my last exams in, uh, in sports psychology, like one and a half week ago so uh, for this for this term I it was the last one so now I'm waiting waiting for the results <laughs> very, very good. nice yeah and is that all online now or are you actually attending classes no it was all online they changed uh, all every, everything to online yeah yeah so this helped uh, many of us helped a lot because uh, many of us are also that in my class that uh, are also working yeah. full-time working so so this this helped us a lot mm. cool good. yeah how, how have you seen the the crossover in we say your taekwondo coaching and things like that so far with the sports science have you realized things really quickly of yeah oh, okay yeah. this is why this works and things like that yeah yeah uh, actually after the first year i realized a lot of things a lot of things when you put the science in in the way you are thinking and looking, you will see. You will start to th you are you are start to think like, like a like you know a helicopter. You you see things that mm -hmm. not detailed. You're not thinking about details and things that you were thinking about details. You will you will start to see that actually the details don't matter in the in the long distance long term. It doesn't matter so much. It's it's like. Uh, to work with an athlete, it, it takes time, and yeah. uh, the te details may become in like in the in the end, really, really in the end. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning, you can you 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 see things. Yeah, I started to see things from, from a different angle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because like even from your own career, you you were European champion. Was that two thousand and five or? Uh, second, uh, 2005 was our, our second, and in the team we we won the 2004. Yeah, team sport. Yeah. yeah. So like even from then, like I imagine things have changed a lot and how you train and and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think I trained too much. <laughs> too much it, time doing things you shouldn't have done, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think, and and uh, in in the end, with uh, uh, with a be better knowledge. Uh, you will get to. Uh, you can change. Uh, you can. You can give different, uh, more knowledge to to the students today. What uh, what I did by myself mm -hmm. uh, with a better knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like things uh, when you, when we when we are talking about the energy systems, uh, we usually we normally we want to divide the energy systems in uh, in the two categories like anaerobic and aerobic training mm -hmm. uh, but this is the this i think this is this could be wrong because this is the way to study things because uh, we, the human body don't work like that because you're working with the both systems all the time mm. so so everything is uh, interconnected yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and just to to study things when you study like science, then you divide it because this is the way we can um, we can adapt the information that how this is how it works uh, the aerobic system or the anaerobic system. But when you start to work with it, the both systems working together all the time. Uh, like you see a, a taekwondo fight, uh, when you ask people that usually ask people what kind of sport is taekwondo? Is it a more aerobic or anaerobic sport? There are some people that are that are, that are uh, 
they are they are answering that it's an aerobic sport because you need to do many fights. And then there are people that are saying that no, 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 it's totally anaerobic. But this is a system that is working together because I think taekwondo is both of them. It when always you do has your, to be. Yeah, yeah when to some you do degree. Your, exactly. When you do your fast uh, kicks, when you do your attacks, it's, of course, that time it's anaerobic. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but when you're... When you're resting in the fight, I, I'm, I'm like saying resting, you need to use the other system. Mm -hmm. So uh, the both are very, uh, the both systems are, uh, you need the both systems to be strong and you need to train and find uh, a, a good way for the, the, the individual, you know, on the individual level for each person what they need to train and how much. This is the difficulty in sports, because usually in Taekwondo we train a group, um, and, and uh, but we have uh, individual needs. Mm. And this, I think, is like a personal coaching when you have an athlete. What, what do the athlete uh, need and, and try to uh, find out? So I think this is the, um, uh, this is difficult, but important. Yeah. Yeah, it's important that you say that because I think that even with the energy systems, you need to be able to, for example, your aerobic capacity w will have an impact on your anaerobic ability to take exert energy. Um, so, so the bigger capacity you have, the, the more, I guess, play you have a potential to use the, the energy, energy systems in different ways. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. And... Um, I was the, I was I was uh, the, the last uh, the last year I was really really into it with the the energy systems uh, like we did a lot of tests uh, in the school with with other sport fields and other sport uh, 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 players uh, and check how how people were like uh, working uh, and how they how they were ad adapting uh, different kind of trainings uh and yeah you 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 can you can uh, you can get a lot of information to to your own sport when you see other other sports mm. uh, and um, when you get to learn from the how the energy systems work you can also see what uh, taekwondo uh, taekwondo itf uh, uh, athlete needs uh, so back in the days when i was training I think I did too much of like, okay, I need aerobic, uh, I need anaerobic. So uh, I think um, I think I did, yeah, too much, too much. Uh, and when you do too much, maybe you lose other qualities. Mm -hmm. You lose yeah. the time from other qualities yeah. also. That's it, because we don't have much time, like a very limited time to cover a lot, lot, a lot of things. Yeah. And, and, and how, like, based on that then, how, how important do you think the energy system training is in modern day ITF sparring? Uh, is it I the most important um, no. physical thing we need, do you think? Uh, it's important. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's important uh, The if you can divide it, but I don't think you can do it in a, like a, in a taekwondo training like okay only one hour for this uh, mm -hmm. i think this is you need to incorporate everything yes you need yeah. to try to cover things on a same uh, on the same lesson uh, on the same class uh, also i was thinking about because uh, nowadays people are talking a lot of a lot uh, actually in sweden we are talking a lot about uh, how how people are developed like with strength power mm -hmm aerobic anaerobic capacity but in the end these don't matter if you don't have a good technique so what i'm trying to tell you that is when a people attending a class like a beginner uh, the first years are really really important for to develop technique technical skills in the same uh, it, at, uh, when you when you develop the technical skills, you will get a, um, you will get a 
better, like a, I don't think if the English word is the, the correct word, but uh, we were talking about um, uh, like kicking economics, you know, kick when you, when yeah. you, you, yeah. Efficient. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So you better take, what better technique you have, you less energy you use for the technique. Mm-hmm. So if you have, if you don't put uh, the first, like we say, five years developing good technique, it doesn't matter how how much you do the energy system training in the end or strength training because you will always be after uh, uh, you will be always be the second one after a uh, a, a person with a good technique. Mm. How, in, in terms of technique, then, but. You see all over the world, so many different countries have different styles and techniques. Um, so do you, th- do you believe there is a perfect technique or do you believe there's an efficient way to do things? Uh, I think there is no perfect way to do a technique. There's, uh, there's yeah. like you said, yeah, yeah, there's a, uh, this is different. Uh, I, I think it's also um, what do you, uh, in, uh, for the individual. Yeah, absolutely. For their body type and their body yes. mechanics. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. like when I think of Sweden, I, I think of um like a high a high energy type match and high intensity where there's a lot of like rhythm based um stuff on the outside. We say like that's kind of like pro act pro action on the outside where there's not really techniques being thrown, but it, the Swedish guys seem to have a lot of rhythm and footwork and things like that. And obviously that takes a little bit of a, a different energy system as opposed to somebody with a different style. Yes. Or maybe just maybe like bouncing on their toes in the same position, for example. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. You you if you need um, you need different energy system for for that kind of fight, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and also when you talk about the, the technique, you, if you have uh, if you like see, uh, let's say uh, let's say the Irish Irish fighters. In my opinion, they are really, really technical, very technical, and you can see they are very flexible. They have very good flexibility, just because of the technique. They need the flexibility to get the the, the technique, and I think this is also common in uh, in um, for the Argentinian guys. They have also this kind of uh, uh, way to fight with uh, with with technique and and they are quite flexible flex flexibility yeah mm. yeah because i think that's um like as you said it, it's efficient the, the, the certain styles based on the rule set people will try to be as efficient as possible within that rule set and, and based on i guess what we'd say in like in english getting a, a bang for your buck as in trying to get the most out of it as you can without maybe exerting too much energy or, or, or yeah. any any wastefulness, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ato, you've of spoken course. quite a bit about the, the energy system side of things, and is there a reason that that was very attractive to you as part of your study? You know, was there something from your training that meant that that had significance? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is, because I think if you have a, a – when you come to the top level – uh, I'm always trying to come that on the top level when we're talking about the uh, best best eight people in the world in every category. Uh, I think to get there you need to have very good technique. Uh, most of the people that are there they they train for almost all their life. They were like kids when they were starting. Uh, the things that will change them who's going to be the winner is i think who can have uh, a very very uh, good level of the well, let's say aerobic uh, power and anaerobic power if they are almost the same like technical skills uh, and the, now we now when we're talking about technical skills i don't mean that everybody has that perfect bande or or, or dolly chagi but you have a good technique because otherwise you cannot be there. Uh, good technique can mean you have very, very good three or four techniques that are very, very good. You can do them even when you're like tired. You can't do anything but this technique you can do maybe in the middle of the night. <laughs> so yeah. so, uh, uh, so that's why I was thinking about that 
if we want to to develop something and why I was interested of this this uh, how to be there when you have developed everything in a good way then the, the difference between the winners are the guys who can do this the whole way you know ITF Taekwondo is quite hard because you do like five or six fights in the world championships in the same day definitely and I think there's a great phrase for, you know, when, when you talk about the physical fitness being the limiter, it's that, you know, fatigue makes cowards of us all. So when you're tired, yeah. your courage, your willingness to fight goes away. So, yes. you know, first and foremost, maybe you need to have the, the conditioning in place to allow you to express your other qualities. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. also the tactical, uh, tactical skills, mm -hmm. because if you have the ability uh, the physical ability, you can do what your coach says to do. You will hear it, but if your if your fatigue comes, you you won't hear it. It mm. doesn't matter what he says; you, you won't hear it. It's almost a, a mental fatigue as well at the top level. It, yeah. it's, the guy, it's the guys who are able to maybe focus and concentrate that little bit longer. Yeah, and um, usually are able to make the be better decisions. And that kind of brings me back to the idea of. Personally, my opinion is in ITF Taekwondo, we actually focus a little bit too much on technique. Uh, like when you start off as a white belt, it's a, it's a lot about technique. But also, if you go into a black belt class, it, a lot of the training is based on technique. Um, so I, I do think that there should be a little bit more um, emphasis put on making better decisions and putting yourself in scenarios that occur a little bit more often. Uh, and as you said, using that, using your brain a little bit more, because as you said, you can do it in your sleep. So the technique, in my opinion, shouldn't need as much training as sometimes we afford it to. And it should be a little bit more based on decisions and tactics, because uh, when you get tired, it's those things that are, are going to be more important maybe than, than the technique, in my opinion. What, what, what's your um, idea on that? Yeah. Uh, like I said, uh, like I said in the beginning, I think the first years, you, you need to cover the technique. Because if mm -hmm. you got the technique in the first years, and now we're talking about like young people, when you're like 11, 12 years old, you're, you're, you can like... You can swallow all the technique that you're training because your body is like it's taking everything. It yeah, uh, absorbs yeah, it's everything. A, yeah, yeah, it absorbs everything. Uh, and this is the best years to develop technique for 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 like the young people. Do a lot of technique because the the physical abilities will will follow with the technical training also a little bit. But don't focus on on them or, or even when they get 15 if they are not black belts. Don't focus so much like, okay, now we're working on speed or now we're working on this. Develop the technique with some influences of like speed. You can do the dolio, dolio chagi with, with speed, of course, if you, if you teach the proper way. But when you're getting a black belt, I think in the start of the season, you need to, when you're going back to the, the classes, you can like getting them to remember a little bit of the technical skills. Put two weeks, three weeks on technical technical uh, uh, aspects. But after that, start to prepare them physically, mentally for the upcoming fights. Mm -hmm. uh, like a little bit of uh, the energy, working with the energy systems. Like half hour of a one hour class or one and a half hour class, you, you work till in the end like half, um, half hour. Uh, like an anaerobic uh, power with some technique. Mm. So we do dolly or go to chagi or or something. What what uh, what uh, uh, fits them the class? What technical uh, skills they have? Uh, it's no way to 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 do like a, a go to chagi if you never did go to chagi for them. Mm -hmm. Like do twenty seconds of go to chagi with ten rounds of that. This is this, this, no need because they will never use it anyway. So, yeah, is, is is your preference when it comes to energy system training to use taekwondo skills as opposed to, um, we say like general hit training or maybe Tabata training with without just general fitness exercises? We say, or would you prefer to have them specifically taekwondo skills specific, when you're using? Specific, yeah. of course, of course, mm -hmm. specific. Uh, when we're talking about the to to prepare the like the anaerobic power, 
uh, I think specific uh, sport specific. This is the this is the important the most important in, in the because this is what you're gonna use. So use the techniques, what you're gonna use and what you usually use the most uh, in a fight. So this you can like do a videotape and, and see what you did like the last year and, and check this. Uh, and uh, after that, try to to make them stronger uh, with this kind of training. Yeah, you used a word there at the start of all of that article that was quite interesting, I think, in the world of ITF, which is you said at the start of the season. And of course, in ITF, one of the problems that we have and that we talk about repeatedly is we don't really have a season. So we have some competitions that happen at the same time every year, but some other ones that move and international competitions are offered all the way through the year. So do yeah. you decide to uh, opt out of certain competitions or certain cycles to create a season for yourself? Yes, yes. Uh, we did this. We did this uh, in. Uh, we did this. You in Sweden. We we have a, a like in the Swedish um, national uh, on the national level in the in the country. We would have a we have a season. Uh, we talk about the autumn is our pre-season uh, so we don't have any national competitions for 13 years and above so we start our competition season in March and then we have three of the competitions Swedish Taekwondo League so you get a, like a ranking points and and the last one will also have finals between the two best rank uh, who has the two best ranking in each category? They have a final. Who's going to be the Swedish champion? And uh, so, uh, when uh, does that finish? It it finishes in May. It's like after the Euros. Okay. Uh, and this is this, this is this is our like season. Then some schools have they also their own season seasons because they have like a they want to compete in a preseason because they want to try uh, try what level they have, what did they develop, so. Some schools they went to go to uh, Masovia Open. Mm -hmm. uh, Poland. Uh, yeah, some people go to go to if there is any European Cup or World Cup. Usually, World Cup is in in, in the autumn, so some people go for the World Cup also. Mm -hmm. uh, but 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 not not all. Uh, not the people that are really really try to attend a uh, uh, world world champion level. Uh, because we know that you need to rest to be good also. So you need to co uh, recover uh, and you need to have a, a period that you, 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 do, you do training, but for recover training. What, what, what would be your preference on each season? How many times do you believe that you should be peaking to your potential? Uh, I think uh, I want it to be like twice a twice a year, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but usually we have if you have only European Championships, you have once a year. Yeah. I think we have by contrast in Ireland, we don't have an official season, but for the Irish Taekwondo Association, we choose to apply more or less a competitive uh, two competitive seasons. So we yeah. have one that will peak in November, and one that will yeah. peak for the European Championships in April, at the end of April, start of May. Um, and then the difficulty that we run into, and I, I wonder, is there a parallel in Sweden, is that it doesn't sit in line with the grading season. So we want to grade our black belts uh, in December and in July. And so it's, uh, it, it's offset by just a month or maybe a little bit more. And it creates an awful lot of difficulties for instructors because you find you're because we train in a group your 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 top athletes your competitors want to do want to train in a particular way start at a particular time and end their season at a particular time and those people who are hoping to grade want to do everything six weeks differently yeah 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 i know that you you have the uh, you know this the, i think you have the central grading for first degree and above yes yeah we do uh, we we have central grading for third degree and above okay so this make also a little bit difference because uh, we don't have in the national team you don't have so many people like our third degree and above. Okay. Uh, so so the first degree, second degree, they can do it in your their own school. So they can do it 
when whenever they want with their they own instructor, so they can just do the gradients. So I think I don't think the the gradients will affect the uh, the uh, the developing for like for Europeans or the worlds. So. Yeah, it makes for a very interesting uh, slant on it. We, we find it quite challenging when, for example, the ITF decides to move the World Championships to April yeah. um, and the European Championships to the other side of the year or yeah. there's a European Cup in July, uh, you know, or something like this because it's very difficult to know who the European Cup is for if it's in July. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, there's nobody who is in season at this point in time in Europe but it's a European no, cup. Yeah. So we find, you know, that's difficult. And then when the World Cup, it, it doesn't happen very often, but when it's early, like at the end of September, uh, yeah. you know, again, it's a very difficult one because it means to, you know, if you want to peak for the Europe or for the World Cup, then yeah. most of those people need to start their training in, you know, July or, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, of course. when the rest of the club is going into off season. Yeah, this is this is this is challenging, and this is one of the reasons that in 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 the, like uh, my schools uh, we we don't usually go for the World World Cup because this is really really challenging uh, to get people half of the school or or one one fourth of the school training during the summer. The, this sometimes it's impossible. It's impossible. And then, of course, challenging. And this is one of the reasons that we don't usually attend uh, the world, the World Cups. When it when it comes to your um, periodization, then Arto, what's your your preference on on maybe your system? Would you like to base maybe like strength training at the start? Uh, would you would you follow traditional periodization? Uh, no, uh, actually, when we when we're talking about the periodization. Uh, I have an, I have an, um, I have an inner conflict in me, mm -hmm. <laughs> is because we can, we, we have like two kind of periodizations. It's like the classic periodization, and then we have the uh, non-linear periodization. Mm. So uh, the last years, I was really, really looking for the non-linear periodization. I was training myself uh, after the non-linear periodization after. I met. Uh, uh, I was on the at a university for the uh, uh, f like an audience to to listen. There was uh, this uh, guy who who wrote the book uh, about this in 2011, and I started to actually work after the nonlinear periodization, and it fits me very very good. Uh, but the nonlinear nonlinear periodization also gives you the opportunity to uh, to uh, train a little bit different way when we talk about the strength training. Uh, like the classic periodization, you put a lot of effort on a specific, uh, specific uh, quality on a mm. specific uh, period. Yeah. Uh, but this also uh, has shown in, in, in some, uh, some of the uh, articles that uh, if you put a lot of time on developing power, uh, when you change the period, you will also lose power. But the nonlinear periodization, it gives you uh, opportunity to train uh, different kind of uh, qualities during the whole year. So. Uh, with the nonlinear periodization, you can, uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, on the Monday you do for a, like hypertrophy. You need uh, to gain a little bit um, more muscles, but on Wednesday you do more power training, like to getting more speed and power. Uh, and uh, on uh, Friday you you work uh, for. Uh, endurance uh, so this gives you the opportunity to work the whole year and still develop and this is really interesting really really interesting uh, because the, the, the nonlinear periodization also gives you time for more rest so mm. basically nonlinear periodization gives you 
uh, opportunity to choose what your body feels to work today. So if you are really, really, really tired and you know that, okay, today power training is not good for me. So you don't follow as a, like, a, like a blind that, okay, now it's power training and I need to do it because my coach said to me that I need to do the power training because it can also give you a lot of injuries if your body feels really, really tired and you do power training. So maybe you do a light weight training that day just to recover. So this is really, really interesting. And I, 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 I'm, I will just check that. I would say a lot of people I think a lot of people out there uh, should read more about the, the uh, how the, about strength training and power training. And Stephen G. Fleck and William G. Kramer is really, really these guys who were developing the system of the nonlinear periodization. And there are very good books about this and articles on the mm. internet. Uh, and uh, the book that I'm uh, the first book they wrote was uh, Designing Resistance, Resistance Training. I don't know if you guys uh, seen this, but uh, I've read this, but it's really, really good and gives you a lot of information about this. Uh, why, I'm, why, why, I'm, why I'm telling you that I have an, I have an inner conflict with the, the, the nonlinear and classic uh, periodization is it's because we have, a, a, like in our school, we have a season. So you have a pre-season and then you have a, a competition, competition season. That's why I have a little bit of inner conflict. Uh, and the last, uh, last months, I was like, the, the other inner conflict I have is, do we need power training or, or strength training in Taekwondo ITF with weightlifting? This, this, can we, can, can, yeah, can we develop it from other ways of training? Do we need to do the Olympic lifts? Do we need to do the, uh, the, 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 the classic strength training? Or is there other ways we can do? Can we, can we, because if you look at the, the wrestlers, I have friends that are top wrestlers in Sweden. They never, they, they never did this kind of training and still they are really, really strong. Mm. I think one of the interesting challenges you have there is wrestling by its nature. You're moving another human being through space and there's an external resistance. So there's a little bit of an advantage that they have over us in, in, in that respect. But I do agree with you because natural to what we do is plyometrics. We have plyometrics yeah. included in so much of what we do. We jump, we yeah. spring, we bounce. So, yeah. you know, there's an element of power training that's included autom almost automatically, you know, uh, yeah. if we're yeah. training uh, Taekwondo. I suppose that the real uh, question is how much need is there to, uh, you know, enhance the basic metric of, you know, force development. So how much muscle mass, how much recruitment do we require and what's the best way to train that recruitment so we can then transfer that into raw speed and explosive power. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the the real challenges because, the, like you said, with traditional periodization, if I have an eight-week block for hypertrophy, an eight-week block for strength development, an eight-week block for power development, and, and so on, well, I lose some of my muscle mass when I move, to, you know, I, everything yeah. everything is being lost all of the time. And in Taekwondo, it's, it's quite general in a lot of what we do. And you can't take 12 weeks or 16 weeks away from something and hope that it yeah. will still be there for you. But I find that I still include a phase, as you say, with the seasons in preseason, where, okay, this is the time when I will do a little bit of focus strength training. And it's also the time when we might do a little bit of a, make a focused effort on the aerobic system specifically, where it would be longer, slower, uh, or it was a lower maximal heart rate activities for a longer period of time. Um, an aerobic base kind of mentality which I hate to do for the rest of the year, but, uh, but maybe for four weeks at the beginning of each season, we can do a little bit of that, uh, you know, and if, if anything, 
just so that we can do recovery days later where the where people are not finding 20 minutes of continuous exercise you know difficult and challenging to where they yeah. feel that yeah 20 minutes of continuous exercise is easy i can do that that's no problem and it can serve as a good recovery yeah yeah but uh yeah. so what else uh, or when do you start your plan so, uh, and how do you share it with the the athletes in your team uh now in for the for the in the in the national team we usually people do by day by day schools. Uh, they they put the, the the plan. So that's why I don't want to talk about uh, how we uh, about the national team because we are it's changing a lot. The structure is changing a lot also with the coaches and everything. So so but how I do in 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 in, in um, what I try to do if some of the the, the athletes. If they try want to uh, or need some help, I, I I will help them. So my if if we see for the for the year, uh, you mean the plan for the year yeah. when we start and when yeah, uh, June for us is usually recover. This is uh, this month is recover because then we have we had the Europeans, we had the Swedish uh, uh, the last Swedish Taekwondo League. Mm -hmm. It was different this year, so of course, this year, of course, but uh, but this is what we have. So June, after the grading, we have a reco recover. So the first step in the preseason will start in July, but not taekwondo uh, training. It's like you do your training by yourself. You go uh, for uh, uh, running or 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 weightlifting. Uh, yeah. You do more this kind of training and middle of august we try to go inside for training uh, taekwondo two times a week and maybe be outside for two times a week and then we changing changing this in september to be more inside uh, inside the dojang and, and do more taekwondo uh, so the preseason it's like the autumn yeah and uh, and uh, after the preseason, we will have a small recovery during the Christmas, small recovery, and then uh, more uh, more challenging training in the beginning of January, because then we have two months uh, to the first competition here in Sweden. And usually, people go abroad or some some uh, in the, in February they go abroad for some competition. So, uh, but. I'm trying to get them ready before the Christmas recovery, so they have some abilities that uh, we don't need to work on when they when they getting back uh, in January. It's like two weeks rest, uh, and uh, then we can focus on, on tactical skills. We can focus on 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 more speed, uh, timing. Uh, do 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 more free sparring and and etc. Uh, and this we can continue the, the the whole spring. So getting prepared for the competitions. So is there anything so, that you measure? So you were talking mm -hmm. about the tests. You were talking about testing that you did in uh, university. Is there anything that you yeah. actually measure with your athletes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we. When we do it university, we have also always because we are learning. So we have specific persons that's coming there. We can test with the aerobic uh, test. You know when you you're running on a on a, uh, on a machine and you have the yeah 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 exactly uh, and uh, uh, the anaerobic uh, power by the the the, um, uh, this, the this the cycle you know bicycle yeah uh, you do the wing gate test and etc. Uh, but for the athletes, if we, if I go to test my my school athletes, we usually do by Cooper test. Uh, you do some strength tests, uh, and then you have like one repeti repetition maximum. You do the squat test. You do the uh, the how many dips they can do. Uh, if there are or chin, uh, you can do chin test. Um, 
So there are different different ways. The, the, the most difficult way to test is the anaerobic uh, power mm -hmm. because if you want to exactly know how the anaer anaerobic power is working, it's the wing I tested. This is the best one uh, to get the information. Uh, how they develop the power and how is the the the, the peak power and how is the uh, how they are losing the power in which time they are losing the power. So. This is if you want this information, you need to do the Wingate test. Uh, but this also it's a <laughs> it's a it's a matter of costs because yes, when do the tests you need it, it costs. Mm. Uh, but I know there are some other there, there there are some other tests you can do instead. But I don't think they are the they are not the same as if you want to get the most information like in in, in the Wingate test. Mm. Is it is this that is this a group that you use then, Arto? Just specifically national team athletes, maybe just like high level people who are interested in competition, or uh, uh, in my school, it's it's only the people when we do some tests. We it's only the people that are at are the next step to the national level or are at the national level. Okay. Yeah. With with the national team, we did actually this kind of test three times. Back in the days, we did at the, the Swedish Sport uh, uh, Center. So, and this was all. This was free for for us to do. So, we did like two days tests. I think we did two times in 2011, and one time in 2012 or 2013 we did it. So, and we did that there. We did uh, all the tests: speed test, uh, jumping test with a count movement jump and and, and movement jump and and uh, uh, the wingate test, also wingate test for arms, like seven seconds, break seven seconds, work seven seconds again, like seven times. Uh, and this was also good to see because you could see in the national national team, you could see the people that had good results were the people that were in the top uh, who got the medals in the competitions. It would be very yeah. interesting to see a correlation there. Yeah, that this uh, this was uh, this was really really good correlation, very good correlation. Uh, uh, there was a there, there was a girl in the, in the in the team. Uh, if you remember, she was world champion two thousand eleven in uh, minus sixty three. Uh, uh, Cecilia. Cecilia. Ah, Cecilia, of course. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had really really she was really really strong physical physical really really strong, really really strong. Uh, so, so uh, you could see many people that are uh, who got the medals were also they had good uh, uh, tests. They did good tests. Uh, I I know that uh, back in the days, like we're talking about 15 years ago, I think 15 years ago, yeah, the Olympic Committee in Sweden uh, they attended in WTF. WT nowadays it's called WT. So they attended. Uh, uh, I think it was Dutch Open, and they had the. Uh, they brought the system with them to do the how to move and jump, and they wanted to test so many people as they could. After the waiting, they did uh, like a test jump, and then they did a, a, a jump that they were like uh, see you, how. how yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and they could actually see a correlation after that test because I think there were like two hundred or three hundred people that that attending the jumps, that people were jumping high. They had strong um, strong leg muscles. They were also in the top four in each category. So this was really interesting, really really interesting information. And that's good because it's one that we can easily test in the dojo. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it, we can go yeah. into the dojo and we can use a simple piece of software to test, you know, the, yeah. the vertical jump or counter movement jump. It's not, not so bad. But like you said, something like, you know, anaerobic power or lactate threshold is, is challenging. You know, you need, a lot, challenging. you need a lot more training. And also for those kind of tests, repetition is important because you need to see, you know, is your training uh, stimulus actually working over time? And if you can't retest and retest, then your your indicators are, are are missing, you know, some data. But a counter movement jump or a vertical jump, 
you can test every week if you need to. It's not a yeah. it, it's not a challenge to do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think there's some uh, blurred lines really in, especially in our sport, between strength training and power training in terms of the whole idea of brute. We lost your audio there, Richie. Yeah, we lost your audio. We're we back? You're back. Yeah. Okay. So I was just saying, uh, in terms of like brute strength, it's something that people think that, okay, you go to the gym and, and really, really lift heavy, and the stronger you are, the better you become. But I think that there's some blurred lines between power training and um, strength training that because in my opinion, it's not really about brute strength for our sport like wrestling where you're trying to move another human being. Um, so re- really, I think that people spend a lot, a lot of time with maybe maybe not the correct focus on the, the, the purpose for the reason for strength training. Yeah. 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 Uh- I don't know how many other countries, what the, what what the culture is in many countries that doing the the the, the strength training, uh, because I I don't have so many so much knowledge of other countries in Taekwondo ITF for the strength training, but I can see in 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 Sweden the people that are doing strength training maybe they are not knowing exactly what they what they are doing. So uh, some people are. Some people are uh, developing maybe different skills that we need, uh, and I, I I don't think that you need to be in a in a gym for like a three or four times a week. I think this is this is not good for for us because, again, we are talking about the time. You are taking the time from something else. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think taking the... the time from something else. This is the it's you, you, it's usually you have you have a. You 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 can't train in 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 our countries. You you when you have work, maybe school. You can train seven seven days a week, twice a twice a day. This is impossible. It's impossible. So you need to you need to know where to put uh, put your your time to mm. time. Uh, and that kind of brings up the idea of if people cannot test things like uh, power, etc then if if you don't have a, a metric that you can improve on maybe yeah. maybe people are wasting a lot of time by just maybe doing this training aimlessly yeah. you know yeah yeah of course testing is all test, testing is all, all always a good way because uh, it 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 gives me an uh, uh, another idea because when we're talking about an athlete you can see different skills of an athlete you can see mental mentally mental capacity but this is something that is really really different to test mm-hmm. because yeah. you can i can ask my uh, my my athlete that how are you doing how is your life etc the people can lie yeah technical th- technical skill it's how my eye see it, how, 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 what is my preference than before. This is what the technical level is. But me and you have different ways to see the technique. So maybe you can see an athlete that it's a poor technique and I see this is very good technique. Mm. But the physical condition, this is not, this, you can't lie. Yeah. This, this you can test, really, really test. And you can get the numbers that you have the numbers and the numbers don't lie. Yeah, I think that's why people uh, kind of get so attracted to it because it, it's something that's a little bit more black and white. You know, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like power break, and you either break the board or you do not. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 if you if you start to test people like um, your athletes more, then you can also see what level they really are. Because mm. I think all the all sports have uh, uh, you can have an uh, uh, you have an, a wall. Uh, so in ITF, uh, the wall come come after two, uh, or not the sport. We say the, the athlete have a wall. So it depends on how good uh, condition you are. So after the, the wall can come after two fights, the wall can come after three fights, or the wall can come after four fights. But if we can develop a system that uh, that gives you the numbers you need to be a winner for a world champion. Then you can tell a guy 
like when, when 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 you have a black belt, he wants to come for the national team. You can see the guy is good, uh, 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 but the the when you do the tests, the physical ability there is not the physical ability abilities to get the world champion. You can tell them, okay, you you need to train more on on these specific specific things to become a world champion, because all of us three we we did the we did fights, and we know that when you get tired. You get tired. Mm. You, you you cannot you cannot think about now. I'm there is no extra energy when the energy is off. Mm. Yeah, and this is really interesting. When is in ITF Taekwondo? When is it coming the wall for the athletes? Uh, and I, you know, in marathon they talking about the wall. Mm, <laughs> People mm, yeah. like they they run into the wall, and that's when then you're off. So uh, uh, I usually. Talk about this also in when in competition in a specific in fight yeah. because this this is this is where you you, you can you have the wall uh, and I think when you test the people if you have uh, if you have numbers what you need you can also give it's like a black and white you can you can tell your athlete like okay here see. Uh, your your Cooper test is uh, is number if 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 we take numbers it's number three but you need seven to be world champion mm -hmm. you can see it oh shit I'm 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 only three I I will never be world champion if I don't get better uh, view to max uh, you understand what I mean of yeah. course yeah yeah I think it's a it, it becomes a very interesting and fascinating area because of how much control you. Yeah have and how much control you give up when you when you go into sparring competition because i can adapt my sparring style to be more conservative in terms of energy expenditure or more explosive and therefore challenge my opponent's energy expenditure and yeah. also how good a draw i get and my relative skill level makes a big difference so if i'm you know in the 63 kilo division and i'm timothy boss um you know, some matches I will have to go to 90 to 100 percent. Some yeah. matches I only go to 50, 60 percent. Yeah. And yeah. if I can get to the quarterfinal and yeah. I only did 50 percent, 60 percent, 60 percent. Now it's quarterfinal. But my opponent had to do 75 percent, 80 percent, 80 percent. And they arrived yeah, in yeah, the same yeah. position. Mm. We're not equal anymore. We have no. we have a different road there. And even we see it so often that, you know, the person arrives to the semi-final, but they're in semi-final number two. And so the final yeah. for them is five minutes, eight minutes earlier than for the person in semi-final yeah, number one. Yeah, yeah. And it matters because of the, you know, of the course. recovery. It's just those extra few seconds of explosive activity that's available to you because you could recover for a little longer. You know, yeah. it, it's it's a big deal. Um, but I think the the concept is is sound, the idea that, hey, there's a certain minimum level that, you know, we don't yeah. know what it is. We don't yeah. have a number, but there's a certain yeah. minimum level that you should be able to ha achieve at least this level, whether it's in terms of VO2 max, whether it's in terms of aerobic power or, or anaerobic power, that, yeah. you know, you should, you should definitely be north of that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because always when we're coaching, the job is to find, hey, what's the thing that's holding you back the most and remove that yeah. obstacle. So if we know, yeah. hey, you're just not, you don't have the aerobic capacity to go through round after round. So the more we can work on your skill until the cows come home, but it will never let you get to the fourth round because you don't have the aerobic capacity to go there. Yeah. So yeah. if this is one thing that we can start to target and say, okay, remove that obstacle. Okay, now it's something else. Remove that obstacle. Now it's something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and this is this is this is really interesting because I uh, this is what I'm looking for for in the future for for uh, like ITF as an organization that we have this kind of numbers maybe maybe starting to do an an, an athlete uh, uh, profile for for uh, like a ITF Taekwondo mm -hmm. and you you can you can have some numbers uh, to what you need to have in physical. Uh, physical abilities to get the world champion gold medal. Of course, in different categories because yeah. different categories, weight categories are working different. Uh, this, 
I think when we come to that point, then this this uh, the sport will become really, really professional, really professional. Well, here's a proposal. Let's start with the simplest one that you already mentioned. You know, maybe we can go to the next World Championships with a jump mat and do a vertical jump test for for people. Just very almost good. very easy to do, almost like um, you know, a fairground attraction. You know, test your vertical yeah. jump, mm-hmm. see how high you can yeah. get. And, you know, if you have a couple of jump mats, you could have five, six hundred points of data very quickly. And yeah. once you have a name with, you, you then know the category, you know their, how successful they were in the championships, and you can start to draw yeah. a little bit of comparison. Yeah, yeah. This would be, this would be really, really good information to start with. Yeah, because then of, you have of, some norms. You, you know, if your um, athlete at home is jumping and they can make, you know, uh, 80 centimeters, uh, you can say, well, your leg power isn't what it needs to be to be, yeah. look at the people who are winning special technique. They can, you know, for female, for male, for junior, for senior, they have th- these characteristics. So yeah. we can, we can tell a lot, you know? Yeah, of course, of course. Good place to start. Yeah, this is, yeah, very good place to start. And also if we want more to, to, to develop it more and, 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 getting more professional if we could in some way uh, take all the people that are uh, attending uh, the world champion uh, world championships and you can also see the lists you can see people that okay these guys they they are like top 10 uh, or top uh, 4 or top 6 if we can have a contact with them like one and a half month before the world championships and they do a simple cooper test mm. simple cooper test like 12 minutes or 3000 meter running and get a, a, a get a, uh the numbers from there you can see uh, what kind of level they have in the aerobic power so this means you can also see how fast they can recover between the fights it won't work in my club will it we don't, we don't believe in putting one foot in front of the other. We don't like running. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always one of the challenges for me. I think when I was studying in my degree as well, it's like, well, you're testing my, uh, you know, my lactate threshold on a bike. Um, I, I don't own a bike. I, I've never owned a bike. I don't know what, you know, I can't cycle. Yeah, yeah. You know, this isn't a good test for me. Or, you know, I'm on a treadmill to do a VO2 max. It's like, I don't run, <laughs> you know, but uh <laughs> But it's interesting because, yeah, if you want to test a swimmer, you put them in a pool. If you want to test a cyclist, you put them on a bike. And usually for the cyclist, they di- like there's a lot of data that shows if they bring their own bike, they get a different result yeah. than if they use an ergometer. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course so of course. it's quite interesting. But it's still, it's, um, you know, we have to begin with something. And, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, if, it, if the data isn't perfect, okay, it's not perfect, but it's a beginning. It's a beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well, I've been fascinated. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 and and I, and I think the the we need more in 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 ITF Taekwondo. We need we need more ideas like like this. We need more uh, uh, you know more profession professional people to get involved. Uh, and I don't talk about professional people that are outside the organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need people that, uh, like are in the organizations that understand also the sport because I can bring a, a, I can bring a, a guy who is a, a PhD in, in, in sports science but don't know anything about Taekwondo ITF. Mm-hmm. I think this, this will give a, a bad signal but also maybe he don't know exactly what to look at. Absolutely. So if we, if we get more people in our sport to to, to maybe maybe to study or, or people that already study something to do something for the for the ITF this because they already know the sport this is this is even better oh 100 percent yeah totally agree with that yeah guys I think that was a great way to spend the morning yeah fantastic chat thanks very much Arto for sharing some of your knowledge and experience with us thank you very much thank you very much I think uh, I think we we're gonna have a, a more chats in the future because uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm just in the beginning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just in the beginning. We can do a, a term review every time you, you have a new module in a, in a, yeah. It's good. And, 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 and thank you guys really really for the 
for for your for your side the side the, the the Instagram and everything it's it's give me gives me a lot of new ideas all the time thinking about the coaching uh, how to develop the athletes at my school I get uh, all all the time I get new ideas uh, so so thank you very much you you you're really doing a good good job for the for the ITF Taekwondo really really good appreciate, appreciate it, it. thank you.